Hi there. Today I thought I'd share with you some of my lovely old English Meteor Glow engines. The Meteor 60. Now these perhaps aren't the most sophisticated or power, most powerful engines that you can get, but they are a really important part of English history with glow engines from the early 1970s and right through into the 1980s. Well, I thought it'd be good to start off by having a look at my uh, brand new in the box Meteor 60. And if we look on the side here, we can see made in England by Meteor Model Engine Company, and that's in Birmingham. And look, we've even got their telephone number. Now, as I said, this is the Meteor 60, and this was produced in, they were introduced in 1972. And if we have a look in here, we've got lovely, uh, lovely sticker, probably never use it, but it's a, it's a really nice thing to have. And we have the Meteor 60 operating instructions there. It's fairly basic, but, uh, but still interesting and useful. Interesting ideas of prop size, plugs. And we've got the instructions for the carb. It's quite an interesting carb on the, on the Meteor 60 because it has a low speed needle, a high speed needle, and an air bleed for setting the idle. And so it's quite useful to have these instructions. And here we go, look, we've got the guarantee card. So <laughs> if we have a problem, we can, uh, we can return it maybe. So they're medium model engines. So, but that's seriously, that's really nice to have. Interesting piece of history. And here we have the engine. As I said, brand new, never seen, uh, never seen fuel. And uh, got the high speed needle in the box there. And look at the carb first. And see here, Meteor, made in England. I, I love that about these engines. Uh, a real proud manufacturer. And uh, if we look on the back as well, on the back plate, made in England. Very, very proud of their, uh, of their engine. Now, uh, the carb, it's got the uh, low speed needle on this side. And we have the high speed needle and then the air bleed screw. If we turn it over, we can see Meteor 60. Uh, one of the things I quite like about this is the prop driver, the way that covers the, the front housing. It just kind of makes it look a little bit sleeker. Now this is an old cross-flow design and it's a Dykes piston ring. I don't know whether that can be seen. It's a Dykes piston ring in there and there's a baffle on top of the, uh, on top of the piston. Now this is the Mark II uh, uh, Meteor 60 and I'll mention the Mark I in a second and also some of the later developments. Now this is quite a, a heavy cast silencer, muffler, which I, I really like. I, it's got Meteor, again written on the side. It, it's quite weighty, which is perhaps a, a downside really. We've got the pressure nipple, and we've got a, a hole here, which I assume is for priming the engine, just a syringe to put a, a squirt of fuel into the engine. It's quite a nice, I, I really like the, uh, the retro the retro look of the uh, of the design. Now I said there was uh, a Mark I, because this is the Mark II that came out in 76. Now the Mark I came out in 1972. Very similar to this with just a few uh, subtle differences. As I said, this one has got a Dykes piston ring. The Mark I also had a Dykes piston ring. The head was slightly different. It didn't have this kind of recessed area around the plug. This is a, a head from a Mark I that I have, and you can see the fins just end up square. And it's not such a, a, a deep head as well. Let me just move the box out of the way. It's not such a, a, a deep head. And I think the earlier Mark I had eight fins. This has only got seven, I believe. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, seven fins. So there's just, just very subtle differences. And I think there were some differences in the, uh, in the carb as well. Uh, one other thing about the Mark I is it had a, 
a more conventional prop driver like this one here. This is the front of an old Mark I. And you can see, let's put that aside. So the, um, the ones after this, I believe, were ABC. And this is one that I need to clean up and try and work on. You can see it's got different fins, different head. It's, uh, it's, it's not a cross-flow piston. And as I said, it's, uh, it's an ABC engine. You can see there's no ring on that. But quite a bit of work to do to, uh, to get that running at, at some point. Now, I'm going to be running one of these and we'll have a look at that in a minute, but I'm not going to run my new in the box one because I quite like keeping that as it is. But I have another one here, another Mark II, and this one does have the conventional piston ring. So being a, a slightly later version than this one, but uh, more or less identical. Although you'll have noticed that the carb is different. Now, the carb on this is actually from a Mark III. It's from this engine here. And I put that on because the original carb for this, I've had some slight problems with the low speed needle, which I need to resolve. And this carb just felt a lot more, um, a lot more positive and the adjustment seemed a lot better. And you can see they've done away with the, um, the, 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 the air bleed. It looks like it might have had one at some point because there's, in the casting here there's provision for a hole uh, or a screw to go in the end, but this one hasn't. Well, now you've seen my Meteor 60s, all that's left to do now is to get this one into the test stand and see how it runs. Well. I'm at my local airfield and it's a really, really blustery day, so there's no flying. But what better to do on a day like this than get one of these lovely old engines purring. So, it's all clamped in the test stand and ready to go. I've got an APC 11 by 7 prop, I've got a number 8 OS plug, and I'm going to be running it on this 10% Nitro Model Technics Duraglow and that's 15% uh, oil, that's 5% castor and 9% synthetic. So, let's not delay further. Let's get this thing started and see how it runs.
Right, well, I hope you enjoyed seeing that run uh, as much as I did running it. It started off really, really rich on that low speed needle and I must have turned it in a couple of turns to get it lean enough. And But once I'd got it dialed in, it seemed lovely. A little bit of hesitation on the pickup from idle up to full speed, but you know what? It's a big engine, it's an old style engine, cross flow with a, a piston ring, conventional piston ring. So, you know, I'm not surprised really. But that idle at about two and a half thousand RPM was just really, really nice. And I think we touched about 12,000 RPM at one point, full speed. Uh, more likely around, or more, more often it was around 11,500, something like that. But I thought it ran absolutely lovely considering it's a mid 70s engine of an old design. But the thing that I really loved was the sound we got from this old heavy uh, muffler silencer. It, it is quite a heavy design, but it's got a really, really deep, sweet sound to it. So I'm really pleased with that. So what more can I say? I can't wait to get this in a trainer I'm building at the moment and to hear that going around the sky with that really sweet sound and get a little bit of the mid 70s back in the air again. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that as much as I enjoyed actually running it. Thanks for watching.